Okay, so here it is. The next project we're going to be working on, Space Crusade. Came out in 1990, I think, or 1991. I'm, I can definitely remember playing this in 1991. Uh, this copy here is not a copy from my childhood. Uh, picked this up about 10, 12 years ago. But yeah, definitely remember playing this as a kid, sort of age about 11. Fantastic game. My first proper miniatures game. Love the old uh, Necron Warriors, the androids. <laughs> Yeah, just absolutely love this. Proper vintage games workshop for me. This isn't going to be an unboxing. I just want to quickly, just quickly open it up and have a quick look before we uh, get into the meat of uh, this video. Yeah, I mean, this totally brings back memories. Let's have a quick look at some of this uh, old artwork. Yeah, it's brilliant stuff, this. These illustrations are fantastic. Now, pretty pretty straightforward rules. Um, I can never get my partner to play Warhammer. She moans about, you know, you need to roll dice to see how many dice you got to roll. Whereas with this, you know, real real sort of straightforward board game set up in terms of the dice. Yeah, for anyone that's played this, if you're the Marine player, you, you know what I'm talking about when you uh, sort of flip these over. It's like, ah, oh, it's the Android. You just got to hope it's not the Dreadnought. You can see here I've actually got a few pieces from Mission Dreadnought, including one of the big Dreadnoughts, but we're not going to be covering that because what we're going to be doing in this new series is we're going to paint up everything from the original Space Crusade box. So, you know, where's all the miniatures? So I've already had those out, primed them up and done a couple of test models. So let's get the uh, game off the desk and we'll, we'll have a look at those. Okay, so let's take a look at a few of the models. Obviously, we've got Space Marines. Uh, these have all been primed, so that was a Blood Angel with a red plastic. Obviously, now it's uh, just primed in black. What I've done is uh, magnetized the weapons, so uh, this guy can come with a, like a normal bolter or something like a missile launcher. Or, if he's feeling lucky, plasma. The captains come with a couple of options as well. You've either got a bolter and a power axe. Or the other option that I definitely remember, uh, I definitely remember being better, is the uh, the power fist and the sword. So yeah, each of the chapters has got five models: um, got Blood Angels, the Ultramarines, and the Imperial Fists. Got the Captain, uh, then four normal Marines with different loadout options. So they're all monopose. You got the Captain and the normal guys. Same for each of the uh, chapters. So let's have a look at a few of the villains of the piece. Got the Space Orcs, real cool old model here. Love this guy. Got some Bad Moons sculpted in the back there. So all the Orcs are uh, very similar. Slightly different um, finish to the guns on some of them. That adds, adds a bit of variety, but generally they're a very similar pose. Got the Gretchens. Really, really cool, really cool little characterful models, these. A little bit soft on the details, but you know, this, these are 30 years old. Got Chaos Space Marines, so uh, these guys are glued together because uh, they've only got sort of like one one weapon loadout option. So that's the champion there, the captain. I'm not sure what it's called, champion or captain. Uh, then the sort of uh, missile launcher guy as well. The origins of the Necrons, I believe. So these are androids. I always knew them as androids when I was playing. These are these are pretty hardcore in the game. Gene Stealers. Absolutely love these guys when you're playing as the alien character. Really good in close combat. You know, great to drop down on top of the uh, on top of the Space Marine captain or something like that, or take out one of the heavy weapons. Really nice models. Like absolute classic Gene Stealer. Really nice detail on this. You know, again considering the age. And then the big lad himself. Ed 209. I've not magnetized these because they can kind of like slot in. So, yeah, so you basically just put different weapon options on here to go along with the heavy bolters that come as standard. But yeah, I can just like rem remember playing this game and uh, you'd be a couple of you playing as the marine characters and whoever was the alien uh, controller could, you know, put the dreadnought down somewhere or other and whichever of the marine players ended up having the dreadnought appear usually got pretty annoyed. Um, because <laughs> they usually get hammered by the Dreadnought. But yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to getting this painted up and playing some more games. I have played it recently with my partner and um, I'll show you a little funny clip of uh, something that happened at the end of um, end of one of the games where she beat me, basically. So I'll show you that now before we have a quick look at some of the test models that I've uh, put together. 
So it's the end of the mission. The Blood Angel captain is almost off the space hole. Just gonna get through these last few guys. Literally about to step off here. What's gonna happen? Is he gonna make it off? No, one Gretchen, lucky shot, kills him. That's it, game over. So yeah, I've done a couple of real quick test models just to sort of get an idea of how quick I can paint these up and um, see where we're going really with the sort of basic colour schemes. So with the uh, with the Gretchens, we're going to go with something um, pretty straightforward, just some, you know, basic colour clothing and try and focus on making the skin look, you know, half decent. So obviously green skin with maybe some like purple in the shadows. Painted up this orc here as a quick tester. So same kind of thing, really. Uh, he's Bad Moon, so obviously he's got the uh, Bad Moon's livery. I'm trying to make him look pretty um, pretty worn. He's been on the Space Hulk, you know, fighting for ages. He's not going to look clean. I'm not going for like a box art, Games Workshop style. We're going for more of a, dare I say it, grimdark sort of style. But trying to be quick to paint. So again, you know, going for like a nice purple shading on the face to add some bit of menace to these guys. Gene Stealer, just sort of halfway through painting this guy. Just, you know, got the... You know the the main colors down with a bit of shading yeah we're getting a nice effect on the on this on the top of the head here which um can definitely replicate and sort of show you how i did that really easy um yeah like i said the idea of this is to get it all painted up you know pretty quick and easy i've only done a test model for the imperial fist so i started out with this which um yeah you know, i was sort of pretty happy with um it's had an oil wash uh not gonna go into that in too much detail but I wanted a warmer colour scheme, so kind of started with this. I'm actually going to go for this colour scheme, so I'll sort of show you how we put all that together. I uh, don't want to sort of spoil it really, so just going to say like we'll be painting the Imperial Fists up like this, and then we'll be painting up the other Marines, obviously in their proper colour schemes. Real uh, worn look to these guys. You know, the idea is they've been they've been on the Space Hulk for a long time, battling all these. Orcs, Gretchens, Chaos Space Marines, the whole lot, you know. It's these last squads that are alive. They're uh, they're, they're pretty battered. But yeah, if you're interested in uh, following along with this project, you know, definitely subscribe. I'm going to see this one through for absolute certainty because I really want to play with a fully painted up set. For the rest of this video, what I'm going to do is just sort of show you all the steps that I've taken to get to this point here where everything's sort of primed up and the bits that I want to be magnetized are magnetized. I worked out a nice system for magnetizing the Marines that only required uh, one magnet on each of the guys. So yeah, if you're interested in watching this uh, build and paint of this really cool retro set, you know, subscribe and follow along and, you know, drop me some comments uh, of what you're looking forward to seeing. Ah, one thing in particular, I asked this um, on my Instagram account was with regards to the um, orcs, would it be law friendly if a bunch of different clans of orcs all kind of got together um, on the Space Hulk, maybe they're scavenging or just, you know, generally going about you know fighting and arguing would they team up to fight the space marines and the general response i got was yeah if there's humies to kill they'll put aside their differences and fight together so with that in mind if people are interested i might paint up some the main orc clans um so that then so that these guys aren't all bad moons orcs even though they've got that iconography on the back we can just sort of ignore that and paint some of them up as uh different clans same with the space marines uh chaos space marines that is so with the way this is all molded i think it's probably meant to be nurgle but but yeah there are five of them so um you know that lends itself to you know at least painting up one of each you know aligns to different chaos gods or maybe even uh you know pick some specific uh um legion or chapter schemes so you know let me know what you think about that otherwise uh, i might just paint them all of a sort of generic chaos space marine sort of scheme okay so we're going to move on to clean up magnetizing and some basic basing of these guys getting everything ready to paint for the upcoming videos so these models are quite old and the mold lines are pretty bad you can see that i'm just uh, scraping them off with the uh the, the side of a, a scalpel blade so you know usual thing if you're handling a knife just be real careful you kind of want to scrape it rather than cut it and you can see on the left where i've uh, done a quick job of cleaning up the lines compared to the guy on the right and the mold lines you know with these old models they're in the absolute worst place obviously they're down the middle of the model uh, but you know right across the head right across the shoulder okay so you can see with this imperial fist captain that i've already magnetized the weapon options so as we mentioned at the start you got sort of a, a bolter and an axe and a, a power fist and a sword 
So the weapons are normally push fit and they go into the hole in the center of the Marine's stomach. So what we want to do is take a three millimeter drill bit and just carefully widen that hole to three millimeters. Then we're going to put a little bit of um, super glue in and then we're going to press in a three millimeter by two millimeter neodymium magnet. You can see with the um, the yellow marine at the back there, I've got the magnets all sort of stuck onto him. That's to make sure that when I'm picking them up and putting them on the next lot of marines that I'm doing, I keep the polarities all facing in the correct direction. And just using a uh, like an old coffee stirrer there, just to press the magnet in so it's flush with the front of the body. So with the bolters and all the, most of the other weapons, you need to snip off the, the pin that is on the back of them that you'd normally push into the marine stomach area. Uh, just clean that up a little bit with a scalpel, again, just being super careful. And you've got to be more careful with this bit because obviously there's no hole here. So we're going to drill a little pilot hole with, with a one millimeter micro drill bit. And we need to get that right in the center of the section of the gun where the peg used to be. Now you could go for maybe like a two mil and then step up to the three mil, but I'm going straight in with the three mil drill bit here and just going in really carefully, turning it slowly and just making sure the drill bit goes in at, you know, 90 degrees, nice and straight. So again, it's a three mil drill bit um, because we're going to put another three mil magnet in. So you just need to be careful because three millimeter really is the absolute maximum, width, um, maximum diameter of drill bit that you can get on these weapons without kind of like coming off the side of them or the hole poking out the side. You know what I mean? Basically, basically so that we can drill a hole in there without it damaging um, how the weapon looks. And obviously we've got to drill the hole just over two millimeters deep so that the exactly the same magnet the two by three mil magnet can fit in there obviously you know double check the polarity so that um, all the weapons that you're doing will uh, magnetize to the bodies in the correct direction Uh, there we go like that's it um don't need to uh, magnetize where the arm is um as long if the if the if the stomach piece and the weapon piece um line up properly uh it will snap really you know quite nicely against the front of the marine um, and you don't need to magnetize where the uh, arm went you do just need to be extra careful with the heavy weapon option for the captain because um there's slightly less room to work with the drill so there's more chance that you'll damage the weapon so while I've got the micro drill bit out, just going to drill a few little um, holes in the barrels because, you know, they're quite old sculpts. They, um, they're a bit soft. Same in the plasma and same on the, uh, on the orc guns here. That'll just help with uh, when we're painting it up. So just moving on to some real simple basing here, we're going to use a um, old coffee strainer thing and then also this splatter guard. And both of these are really nice sort of like metal hatchworks. So just as a heads up, you can't really cut the splatter guard with um, snippers, plier snippers, but um, household scissors work fine. And just be careful because you do get little bits of the metal sort of, you know, clink, you know, plinking off here and there. And you can see that I've already glued these orcs to the base. Um, so I'd probably recommend snipping off the uh, bar underneath the feet, you know, the slotter base thing. And doing these bases before you glue the orcs on top because you see I have to um, work around the feet so that's just a case of um, you know cutting the cutting the basing materials around the feet it's just a bit more of a pain basically and I'm, so the idea of this is that it's going to look like uh, they're walking across sort of like hatchwork on the space hulk pieces of metal with different different uh, metal panels that they're walking over and I want it to be like an old space hulk it's kind of falling apart I'm going to use the Grell and Badland texture paint just to sort of mess it up really um, you know make it look like rusty and it will also sort of hide some of the join lines between the different basin materials that we're putting on um, the sort of like netting that you can see on the Gretchen there that's uh, just like a, a plastic netting off a bag of oranges or something like that and that's all really that we do for these bases um, nice and straightforward uh, when they're painted up, they'll just be dry brush metal, that kind of thing. But we're not going to get into that now. You know, watch the rest of the videos that I'm going to be bringing out if you want. If you've got any comments on this video, just leave them down below. Um, in particular, I am keen on knowing what your thoughts are on whether it's worth doing uh, paint jobs for some of the different orc clans on these old models. Okay, thanks very much. See you later.